Only a year after the release of Raylib 5.0 comes Raylib 5.5. And since the last video that I did on the subject of getting started with Raylib is already quite outdated, we're going to start from scratch and we're going to take a look at the Windows installer and go over some of the new features. If you go to the Raylib homepage, then there's a handy link right here to the itch.io page where you can see we have the option to access the Raylib 5.5 Windows installer. While that's downloading, I'm going to click this link up here to get to the Raylib GitHub. If I go down to the releases tab here, I can click Raylib 5.5 and we can see here is the juicy change log. The headliner change right here is possibly one of the most exciting ones here. Raylib's pre-configured Windows package will now support C code building for the web in a single mouse click. We have the RGFW and SDL3 backend versions which are now being supported. With 5.0, we had the platform split, which was basically just a separation between the Raylib part of the interface and whatever the underlying graphic library that's being used is. This allowed for support from SDL, which now we're really seeing the effect with Dreamcast, N64, PSP, PS Vita, PS4. Wow. With 5.0, I think there was Nintendo Switch, but it was closed source. Uh, but this is great. It looks like some of these are homebrew backend implementations that are actually open source, which is very cool. It's kind of cool to see these retro ports happening since games made on the Dreamcast and N64 were not using major commercial engines like many games do today and were more likely to be similar to the kind of projects you'll see with Raylib where it's just a minimal custom engine for the game designed directly on top of the graphics layer. We also have GPU skinning support. This is going to make a big difference for anybody working with any sort of 3D game project that they're working on and they want to have animations on their skeletal mesh characters. This is uh, this is going to completely revolutionize that. In the past, it's all been done on the CPU. Now this is kind of a, a worry that's gone away. The CPU animation system is faster, but uh, the, it's faster than it used to be, I should say, but the GPU skinning is definitely ideal. So that's very cool. Also for the C++ users, including the C++ operators is very cool. In the past, if you wanted to use C++ operators, you would be in a position where you needed to use a custom header for C++, despite the fact that C and C++, uh, the way that the Raylib headers are set up, you can include them in C or C++ and it really shouldn't be a problem. You just kind of plug and play work. But yeah, they didn't include the operators before. So this is very cool. You'll be able to use plus and minus and uh, you'll be able to scale vectors without needing to use vector two scale, vector two add. Uh, of course in C, that's not gonna be an option, but still very cool. Glad to see that added. Now, this might not be an issue by the time you get around to it, but I'm getting a warning from Edge here saying Raylib installer isn't commonly downloaded. So obviously there's some concerns that uh, this contains a virus. I'll report it as safe and choose to keep it. And I still have to hit show more and keep anyway. I mean, I know it's safe. And here we go, Windows protect our PC. There we go again. <laughs> That's just how it is, you know. I'll just leave the install path here as C Raylib. That seems fine. Hit install. Oh yes, I forgot. I remember when Ray first mentioned that this was happening. This is very cute. So once the installation is done in your C root, you'll see there's a Raylib folder. And then in here we have EMSDK, MPP, Raylib, and W64 dev kit. This is going to be required for web builds. And it's nice that it's just included with Raylib now because getting it set up in the past was a bit of a hassle. We also have W64 dev kit. If you don't have any sort of developer tools on your system whatsoever, this is extremely vital. In the Raylib folder, this is basically whatever is on the repo normally. So you have the examples. You can dive in here. There's all the different source files for each example, as well as a screenshot of them. In this folder, we have the entire Raylib source code. So this is normally where you would go if you were to build Raylib on your own. But since we ran the installer, you can see that actually this is the output right here. So this is the built version of Raylib and this is the uh, built version of Raylib specifically for web. So that's the idea, right? The installer is going to copy the source to your system and it's going to actually do the building of Raylib. It's going to set up the dependencies. It's going to get you set up also with a copy of Notepad++, which is already equipped to allow you to just pop open Raylib source and start working right away. If you try to run this notepad while you have another instance of Notepad++ running, it's just going to highlight the existing window. So if you already have it open, close it down, but we can go ahead and run it here and it's going to open up Notepad++. So we can see it has Raylib.h, which this is really like, this is your reference. Like Raylib.h is the primary reference that you need in order to write Raylib code. So it makes sense to have this open. And then we have the core basic window.c. Now, an important note about this before you go any further, if you edit this file and save it, you are actually editing the Raylib examples file. So if I right click on the tab and choose open into, 
Explorer, you can see it's this is in Raylib Raylib examples core. So if you edit and save this file, then you're breaking this example. So just keep that in mind. If you want to poke around, that's fine. I think if you want to safely poke around, I would say you can go save as, and then you can create a new file. Now, of course, you're saving this file into the same folder. So if I go to the bottom of core, there's my example. I'm going to make a larger video about how to experiment with Raylib using this Notepad++ for Raylib, which I should mention, if you type in Notepad into your start menu, then you'll see Notepad++ for Raylib appears as its own executable. So you could actually, as long as it's open, you could right click on your taskbar and pin it to the taskbar if that's easier for you, or you can just search it up this way. So I've got my example here. If I go to plugins, NPP exec, execute NPP exec script, or you can press F6, that'll open up this option here, Raylib compile execute. All I have to do is click okay. And you can see there is our Raylib window. And of course, since I saved this as a new example, I'll just add a rectangle to the top right corner. Did I say top right? <laughs> Oops. While we're here, I want to check out the web compile and execute. So I'll press F6 and you can see down here in the bottom left, there is a selector. We can choose between the different scripts. I'm going to choose Raylib compile execute web. Python is used to host the web server that we're able to view the example on. So if you don't have Python installed, you can just open up CMD, type in Python. If this happens, then you have Python installed. If you don't have Python installed on Windows 10, and I believe Windows 11, it should just open the Microsoft Store where you can download Python very easily. I tried to do some path variable shenanigans, but at the end of the day, I just needed to restart my computer after installing Python. But it doesn't hurt to try. Let's hit OK. OK, so there was a bit of a delay there, but all I had to do was run that, and we're in. You can see, congrats, you created your first window. You can see I'm on localhost 8080, myexample.html. So this is the example that I just wrote. And I guess as a really good test, let's add in my custom logic back. Don't forget to close this as well. Uh, that's going to be necessary. This is the HTML server. So if, I think if you try to start it while it's running, it might create an error. Okay, F6, run it again. This time we, it should be the exact same, except we'll have a square in the top left. There we go. If you want a larger video about customizing the shell for your Raylib web game, let me know in the comments and I'll get started on it right away. The important thing is we now have the ability to press one button and have a compiled Raylib program running in the browser, which is very cool. If you're very new to Raylib and you have a lot of questions about how to do different things, don't be shy to leaf through these examples. If you want to compile all of the examples, it's very easy. Let's open up Notepad++ for Raylib and this examples folder, drag this make file into the Notepad. Then we can go plugins, npp exec, execute, and choose Raylib make file. Okay, and you can see it's churning through and compiling all of these. So this will take a minute, but once it's done, then you should have all of the Raylib examples compiled locally on your system. So we'll go shaders, and now we can see each of these now has an EXE. On this channel, you're going to find a lot of tutorials and demos related to Raylib's functions and some very simple games created using Raylib. For some, this is a great way to learn. But at the end of the day, if you're curious and you want to know now, these examples are here and they're ready for you. Furthermore, it's not much to modify these examples in place and build them again. Here's draw ring. And I can see here's all the all the different, you know, parameters of it and whatnot. And I can play with this. If I want to know more, I can drag this in here. And I mean, this is not going to mean anything, but I'll just change the size of the window. It's going to look a little weird, but I can change the size of the window and I can go plugins, NPP exec. Go back to Raylib, compile, execute, and hit OK. And I can now have, see the modified example. And I can see, OK, well, obviously, uh, I've broken some stuff. And now I can read through the code and figure out why that's happened. But the point being, if you want to learn more about these things, pick an example, crack it open, play around with it. The worst thing that you can do is screw the file up. And it's very easy to replace the examples again. If you go to the GitHub, you can see the examples are right here. You can just go and grab whichever one you screwed up. So I go to shapes, draw ring. That's the one I just screwed up. I can click copy raw file, go back into here, paste over the whole thing, save, and I can run it one more time. There you go, it's fixed. So it's not a big deal. Give it a go, see what you can find out.
I'm hoping this video provides a very simple way to get Raylib 5.5 installed on your system and get experimenting with the code. I have two videos planned for next week, both related to setting up a workspace for doing more with Raylib, one with Notepad++ and one with Visual Studio. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and happy coding.